Hello again, it's your old friend Theta, the monotone messiah. Aim is a topic that matters for anyone playing any kind of first-person shooter. The whole competitive dynamic of FPS games revolves around putting yourself in positions that allow you to shoot your opponents, and if you can't make those shots then you aren't going to get very far as a competitor. Figuring out how to improve your aim has been a major focus in traditional FPS games for a long time. There's an entire cottage industry dedicated to helping professional FPS competitors improve their aim, and you can find countless videos about how to kill more efficiently with a keyboard and mouse. But I have yet to see anyone address this in a comprehensive way for VR first-person shooter games. In fact, most people in the VR FPS world view aim as something that just improves naturally over time. For most of my competitive career, I've felt the same way. My emphasis has traditionally been on larger concepts like teamwork, angle dominance, and control of tempo throughout the round, and I do still stand by these as the most fundamental and important concepts if you want to be a competitive FPS player. However, I've found that aim has become increasingly important as I've gone up the competitive ladder. When you're dealing with the monsters in the top brackets, missing a shot can end up being the difference between winning a round or losing it and losing a single round can cascade into losing the entire match. After the end of this last season, I reflected on ways I could improve my own performance. I've been focused heavily on angles and the other topics I mentioned before, and there's always room for improvement there. But one thing I'd never taken too seriously as a singular skill was my aim. With that in mind, I decided to turn my accuracy into a project. While most elements of complex games can't be practiced very well in isolation, there are usually at least one or two that can. Let's say, for example, that you want to be a good basketball player. Part of being a good player is being able to hit shots from a variety of positions on the court, which you can practice on your own. All you need to do is consistently and deliberately practice shooting the ball from a variety of places on the court. If you do this on your own, you can hit hundreds of shots in a single session. This gives you the chance to tweak and improve without the pressure of a game, and it also gives you a ton of reps for that task. If all you do is shoot during games, you'll make progress much more slowly because you won't be able to slow down and be deliberate about what you're working on. And while this works well for shooting the ball, the same method of practice will not work as well for other arguably more important skills needed for that game. My point here is that this practice, if done correctly, will translate to you being a better shot. But being a good shot is not enough on its own to make you a good player. It is a requirement to be a good shot, but that is not sufficient on its own. Playing any game at a high level will always require more than one attribute, and it tends to revolve around combining many attributes, all functioning together in harmony. Similarly, in first-person shooters, being a good shot is a requirement for being considered a good player, but it isn't the whole picture. That being said, it's also very much like shooting basketballs. If you practice it in isolation, you will get better at that one element of the game. To begin my own accuracy improvement quest, I started using rifles instead of LMGs during practice sessions. With an LMG, you can make up for a lack of accuracy in many cases with sheer volume of fire. You do still have to be accurate to a decent degree, but it's easier to compensate for missed shots when you know you have 100 more rounds in the box that you can dump into your target. A lot of what I do with LMGs doesn't revolve around a need for accuracy either. There are plenty of situations where support players aren't even trying to hit a target, they're just providing cover so rifle users can get into a better position to make their shots. This is built into the LMGs themselves as their recoil is pretty bad even with a foregrip and your accuracy at long ranges is not great. Although I'd used rifles quite a bit in my early career, I switched to LMGs not long after joining Mayhem and I realized recently that I needed to make the switch back to improve my overall accuracy. I'm not done with LMGs forever, but I thought that I needed to start using weapons where I had no choice but to make my shots. If you're not a good shot with a rifle, you'll pay for it because you'll run out of ammo during a critical moment. The goal with a standard magazine-fed rifle is to make sure you hit as many targets as you can while using the bare minimum of bullets, which means there's a real premium placed on accuracy. After I started this project, it was clear I needed to work on my fundamental aiming mechanics. And this is the area I'm going to focus on for the rest of the video. 
The first two questions I had to answer were, one, what are the mechanics of aiming? And two, why do those mechanics matter? Through my research and practice, I realized that aiming well in FPS games mostly comes down to making your shots very fast and very stable. If you're able to get on target, shoot quickly, and keep your shots stable enough to be reliably accurate, you'll win. Assuming you have good positioning and other elements taken care of, of course. Mechanics are all the things you do to accomplish these goals in order to shoot accurate shots. In traditional FPS games, the mechanics discussion focuses on how you position your arm on your desk, how you grip or move your mouse, and what kind of equipment you're using. This is because the crosshair is static for the most part, and making your shots depends on making sure the crosshair is aligned in the right spots at the right times via inputs from your mouse and keyboard. There are some games where there's an ADS element, that's aiming down sights in case you didn't know, that creates some trade-offs that you have to consider. But in games like CSGO, all you have to worry about is keeping your crosshairs in the right place. Your physical inputs are restricted to how your hand interacts with a mouse and keyboard and the specific type of mouse and keyboard you're using. You can influence your shots with additional moves like crouching, but in pancake FPS games those additional moves are a key press away. Some games also take away the ability to shoot while sprinting, but the penalty is only time-based. Your crosshair stays in the same place, and once you slow down, you're ready to fire on that exact spot. It's also possible to adjust certain settings like your sensitivity to enhance your ability to move and aim effectively. In VR, your mechanics take on a whole new dimension since you're using your entire body to play. So even though there are similarities between the two formats, you do have to think differently about mechanics if you're going to do well in VR FPS games. Unlike aiming in pancake FPS games, aiming in a VR FPS like Onward, Contractors, or Pavlov is always dynamic. What I mean is that these types of games force you to make constant transitions between ADSing and running, crouching, or executing other skilled movements like throwing grenades. And unlike in pancake FPS games, Every time you try to shoot while doing something else with your body, your aim will be influenced in a big way. For example, crouching in CSGO doesn't change your sight picture at all. It lowers your perspective, but the crosshair stays in place. But in a VR FPS, crouching means you will likely have to make adjustments to your aim because your entire body is moving and affecting how you hold your controllers. Aiming skill is therefore not just about placing your crosshair and then working to keep your shots quick and stable, but about figuring out how to manage those transitions between different positions and between aiming and not aiming. It's much more complex when done in VR because you have to not only bring your gun up to aim, but you have to learn how to consistently put your crosshair on what you're looking at and then keep your controller stable enough to make your shots count. Now that you know the reasons why VR aiming is different and worth practicing, Let's break down what I view as the four fundamental types of aim in any VR FPS game. Target switching, aka target acquisition, is rapidly cycling between different targets. Think of running into three opponents in the same place. That's when you'll need to focus on one target at a time and then rapidly move your crosshair to the next one after you've shot the first. Tracking is following a single target as it moves across your field of view. Think of someone running in a horizontal line in front of you. That's when you need to track them. Flicking is a quick shot taken after a rapid transition in which your weapon was not already aimed. Think of sprinting with your weapon down only to see an enemy right in front of you. That's when you need to flick. Vertical. This is any shot taken where the emphasis is on up or down movements. Think of being on top of a building and shooting down at someone directly, or vice versa. This could be classified as a sort of subcategory of tracking, but I feel it's important enough to justify its own category since, again, you're using your whole body in VR and looking up and down can impact your ability to move efficiently. Each of these can be trained via an aim trainer. In this case, I'm using VR aim trainer, which is available on Steam. It's still in the early stages of development and right now isn't as complete as the big pancake aim trainers like Aim Lab, but it's worth using regardless because it will give you the ability to do isolated practice of each type of shot. Most games also have something like Onward Shooting Range, which will give you the opportunity to practice your aim within your game of choice and with the weapons you use on a regular basis. The VR Aim Trainer is good for explicit aim training, 
but the weapons within it are bound to be different from the ones you're using in game. So if you're brand new to that game, make sure you're spending time getting familiar with your loadout first. More than anything, aim trainers are designed to help you with the fundamentals of aiming, and they do that by focusing on the simple mechanics of hand-eye coordination. They do not help you with game-specific issues like recoil management, which is important in most VR first-person shooters. The primary goal of all aim training in general is to improve not just your accuracy, but your decision-making speed. By training aim in a deliberate fashion, you'll find that you not only will hit your shots more consistently, you'll make faster and higher quality decisions about what and when to shoot. At the highest levels of a competitive game, this small edge can make a world of difference. The types of shots you should focus on depends heavily on the type of game you're playing. For example, in a low TTK game with a primary focus on horizontal shots like Onward, tracking and flicking tend to be the most important types of aim, with some target switching also involved. Tracking is important because people are always running from cover to cover to avoid dying, and that means you need to be able to make your shots count as they cross in front of you. Flicking matters because there are many situations in which you'll come into very close contact with an opponent and have only a millisecond to either shoot first or die. Vertical shots don't matter that much because the maps and overall gameplay of the game don't present many vertical situations. In a game like Onward, vertical shots represent edge cases, and you'll be fine if you don't spend much time practicing those. You can contrast Onward with a game like Population 1, which involves flying around in large spaces, securing the high ground, and engaging in prolonged high TTK gun battles. In a game like Pop 1, you should focus mostly on tracking and vertical shots, because you need to keep a stream of bullets on your opponents to kill them, and they're most likely going to be either above or below you. Target acquisition helps, but whoever shoots first is not necessarily who wins. In between these two polar opposites are games like Pavlov and Contractors, which mix elements of both types, combining verticality and higher TTK with a headshot dynamic that can end fights quickly. In these types of games, you should be practicing all four types of shots. Pop 1 and similar games with less of an emphasis on realism bring up another unique element to consider, one-handed shooting. In games like Onward, it's rare to shoot a weapon with one hand unless you're using a shield. But in Pop 1 and other games that don't punish accuracy very much for one-handed shooting, unless you're using a high-powered sniper rifle, you're going to shoot with one hand most of the time. So if you're going to practice shots for a game like Pop 1, you should be spending the bulk of your time working on one-handed shooting. One thing to keep in mind is that, like with Pancake FPS aim training, you don't want to spend all day working on it. Every session reaches a point of diminishing returns in a relatively short amount of time, and you should not expect to get results overnight. Instead, the goal is to practice consistently over time. That's when you'll start to see a difference in your aim. You will get much better results if you practice for, for example, 30 minutes per day four times a week than you will from two hours at a time once per week. In fact, most professional FPS players use their aim training as a warm-up before they play for real, and I think that's a good recommendation for most people as well. If you're just starting out, it's a good idea to spend a little more time training. That means if you're new to VR FPS games or aren't a good shot even with some experience, you should be spending a bit more time just to soak up those beginner gains. I recommend you spend between 30 minutes and an hour training at least a few times per week, preferably before you get into your normal practice sessions. If you can't do it right before you play, that's fine. Just make sure you're putting that time in initially, somehow. As you progress and start to see improvements, I recommend keeping your sessions to around 30 minutes. There will come a time where your gains will slow down dramatically and your aim training will become more about tiny improvements and maintenance than about gigantic leaps in accuracy. As your brain and body adapt to this activity, it becomes less effortful and your skills become increasingly automatic but they also start to plateau to some degree as you hit your own physical and cognitive limits of skill development. You should be able to make small improvements indefinitely, it's just that those improvements become harder and harder to spot. This is the case with most motor skills, so anyone who is engaged in activities like weightlifting or other highly routinized, predictable skill development should be familiar with this dynamic. It's not a bad thing, it's just how our brains and bodies work. 
I said at the beginning of this video that stability is one of the core components of accuracy, and in VR FPS games making your shots stable is one of the biggest challenges you'll face. This is especially true if you're freehanding, as this means you have to reposition your hands constantly, and establishing a sight picture will pretty much always involve some volatility while aiming. If you're a player of one-handed shooters like POP1, this isn't as much of an issue because you're going to be using one controller to shoot pretty much all the time. When you're shooting with one hand, it's much easier to line up your shots because you don't have to put both hands in alignment with one another. Stability is therefore not as much of a concern. However, if you're playing games where you're primarily using both hands, stability is a big issue. It's for this reason that I personally recommend using a stock. I spent the first three and a half seasons of my competitive onward career freehanding, and I thought I would never need a stock. Then James Boak, the co-captain of Mayhem, offered to make me one, and I decided to take him up on it. I received my stock in the middle of my fourth season, which was season 10 in the Onward VRML, and it's what I was using when Mayhem became the regular season number one team in North America and the number two team worldwide. In fact, everyone on our team uses a stock of some kind, and I think that speaks volumes about how valuable stocks are in games like Onward. Some people don't like to use stocks because they prefer the speed of freehand, and there are some excellent players who don't use stocks. There are also games like Pavlov where it can be challenging to use a stock, and you're more likely to just use freehand based on the way the game works. But if you don't play a game like that, I think everyone should at least give stocks a chance, simply because they offer such a tremendous stability benefit, and if you use one enough, the speed issue becomes moot pretty fast. As a short aside, I want to take this opportunity to mention that after many, many requests from the Onward community, James is finally selling his stocks to the public. They're designed specifically to be more stable than other brands, and they're extremely high quality. Each one is, as of today at least, $80 USD plus shipping, and you can get yours by sending an email to sales at bokevr.com. We also have a VR gun stocks channel in my Discord in which you can ask James questions or otherwise discuss stocks. You can join that Discord by going to invite.gg forward slash theta VR. Anyway, aside from stocks, you can create more stable shots by changing your body position. The single most stable position you can utilize is the prone position, where you're laying down. The problem with being prone is you're not very mobile, and if someone gets close to you and isn't within your sight picture, you're pretty much doomed. So use prone sparingly. I don't prone much at all personally. Next is crouching. When you crouch, you retain some mobility while also making your shots significantly more accurate and reducing how much of your body is exposed to your opponents, which in turn makes you harder to hit. You can add a little extra stability by keeping one knee up and resting one of your elbows on your thigh. This gives your arm a platform to rest on, making your shots more accurate whether you're using a stock or freehanding. When you're practicing, you should cycle through the positions that are most common and useful in your game. I don't think I've ever seen someone prone in POP1, so I wouldn't bother with it if that's your game of choice. On the other hand, I crouch all the time and onward, so it makes sense for me to practice my crouching shots. Most of your shots should be practiced from the standing position, as that is the standard across VR FPS games. One thing I would emphasize is that it's important to practice your transitions between each position that matters in your game. So if you're playing onward, it's a good idea to practice shooting around the transition from standing to crouching, and vice versa. Another transition to consider is reloading. Pancake FPS games let you reload with a single key press, which means the transition between reloading and shooting is a matter of timing. You press the key, and then you wait until the sequence is done. The best players know how to time this perfectly to minimize that time, but reloading is sort of an afterthought in those games. With VR FPS games, you have to manually reload. If you're in the middle of a firefight, this means you need to pull your weapon off the target, reload, and then get your weapon back on target. Timing is important, but it's also much more of a mechanical problem. If you don't know how to move your body efficiently, reloads can get you killed. Therefore, it's much more important to practice the shift between shooting and reloading in VR than it is in traditional first-person shooters. There are also more game-specific types of transitions to consider. In POP1, for example, you need to be able to transition from flying, which requires you to extend your arms as if you're a flying squirrel, to shooting. In Contractors, there's a jumping mechanic that you need to master if you want to compete with the best players, so you need to know how to transition from jumping and shooting. 
With that in mind, make sure you don't just take the techniques and positions I'm discussing here as the only ones you need to consider. Think about what matters in the game you play and build your aiming routine around that. Sometimes you'll be able to refine those skills in an external aim trainer, and sometimes you'll need to practice in whatever type of shooting range environment your game provides. To bring this all together, let's review how you can improve your aim in any VR first-person shooter. First of all, focus on improving aim as a specific skill. Don't just expect that your aim will improve automatically. Practice the shots that matter the most in your game of choice. Consistently practice in small bursts, not big chunks of time. Aim is best refined with regular practice over intense practice. Make a point of practicing the shots you'll have to make during the most important transitions in your game of choice. And finally, work to make your shots more stable whenever possible, whether that means positioning your body in specific ways or using equipment like a stock. As a parting thought, don't expect that improving your aim will automatically make you the best player in the game. As I mentioned before, good aim is a requirement for being considered a skilled player, but it's not enough on its own. Aiming is just one factor in FPS games, and it's never going to be more important than developing your game sense, communication skills, metagame knowledge, and so on. You can think of all your skills as a player like a cake, a structure built out of many interlocking ingredients. Aim is one of those skills that is more correctly viewed as icing on that cake. Work on it, improve it, but don't ever think that aim alone is what will make you a superior player. My own results have been significant. Even though I haven't been working on my aim for very long, I'm already seeing a big difference in my ability to hit targets. That's not to say I'm perfect, I still miss shots like anyone else, but on average I'm hitting more shots now than I was before I started training. Over time, I expect this to compound into making me an overall better player in combination with angle awareness and all the other skills I've talked about, not only here, but in my other videos. Well, I've been talking for a while, so I'll just say that's all I've got for today. Until next time, this is Theta, signing off.